Okay, so here we have a Samsung 830 series solid state drive, so a Samsung SSD. This is the actual basic kit, so it includes just the SSD itself with, uh, I believe, a manual guide and uh, basic paperwork. You do get other versions of this, so there is a notebook kit which includes a copy of Norton Ghost and a SATA to USB adapter which allows you to clone your drive across you also receive a you can also purchase a desktop kit which comes with a 3.5 inch bracket to mount this into a 3.5 inch bay this particular model is a 256 gig which i believe is a sweet spot um, running at sata 6 gigabits a second um, the reason why I went for this drive in particular is because Apple tend to use either Samsung or Toshiba SSDs anyway and it's very highly reviewed and very reliable. They use their own Samsung memory with their own Samsung controller whereas um, in the past I have used a Vertex 2 in, uh, as you will have seen in one of my previous videos and I've been very happy with that Vertex 2. It uses a Sandforce controller so it actually trims itself. Um, the newer version I've actually got it here is a Samsung is an OCZ sorry Vertex 3. You do get a Vertex 4 with an Indilinx controller now. This Vertex 3 is also 6 gigabits per second, 120 gig model here. Although the reliability can be questioned with Sandforce based controllers. So if you want a more reliable SSD, it's better to go for something like the Samsung, whereas the OCZ does perform very well overall in tests and it's very fast they're pretty much more or less around the same the controller in, in this drive can be slightly problematic as I said I've been running a Vertex 2 for the past two years perfectly fine so they are a bit hit and miss but the support for these drives aren't as good as they are with Samsung so for reliability you really want to go for a, a drive similar to this Samsung now, if we just take a look at what's inside the box, just a, a quick note, I did note that uh, there's a sticker on the top here, I don't know whether you can see it in the actual camera, but the sticker says, warranty void if removed. So I'm not sure how they actually expect you to open the box and uh, remove the item if you void the warranty by breaking the seal here. So uh, what we'll do, we'll break the seal on the bottom, you can just see on this, with the sticker there, it is a 256 gig 830 series, SATA 6 gigabits per second. So I'll just break the seal at the bottom. There we go. And if we open this up, what we receive inside is a software disk. Uh, interactive, that's an interactive manual and the magician software and we also have a booklet here, um, quick user manual and other such information which you'll probably never read anyway and here's the actual drive itself now this is a seven millimeter drive so it's very thin as you can see there it's very light, um, runs very cool apparently because there's no moving parts there's your SATA connectors at the front so um, not too much to see with this, it's just a, a plain drive. So what we'll do, we'll insert this into the Mac. What we'll do first is we'll, we'll do a quick test of the stock hard drive that comes in the MacBook Pro and then we'll insert this into the system and we'll take a look at the kind of speeds that we can achieve with this SSD. To judge the speed difference an SSD will make to a system, I have a MacBook Pro here. This is the higher end 13 inch model, so a 2.9 gigahertz i7. It has a stock 750 gig hard drive, which I believe is running at 5400 RPM. So if I start a speed test here, I'm using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which seems to be a standard disk speed test application used by many reviewers across the internet. On the left there we can see we've got a write speed of exactly 100 meg spot on and read is giving us around about the same 100, 101 meg mark. So if I stop the test there, we're getting roughly around 100 meg for both read and write. So we'll now install the SSD and see what kind of speeds we're looking at and how much of a difference it will actually make. 
Now replacing the hard drive in your MacBook does not void your warranty, it is a user serviceable part. Obviously Apple will not cover the warranty if uh, your SSD or your replaced hard drive fails, but the rest of the unit is still covered as long as you do not damage anything while performing the upgrade. So to start we're going to remove all 10 screws from the outside of the system. Once all 10 screws have been removed, simply remove the cover and place to one side and we're going to be removing the hard drive located in the bottom left corner here. We have two screws that keeps this drive in place, one screw here and one screw here. Remove both of these to remove the bracket. Once the bracket has been unscrewed, remove this from the drive, pull up on the drive and we can remove the SATA connector on the side. With the drive removed we can see we have some ball screws on each side Using a T6 Torx screwdriver we should be able to remove these and remove the plastic tab and place this onto your new SSD. The screws should also line up perfectly on your new SSD because they are in standard places on all hard drives. So simply remove these and we will screw these into the SSD. With the plastic tab now on the SSD and all four screws on each side of the SSD, simply connect it to the SATA connector. like so, make sure it's firmly in place and then the drive slots into place on each side. With the drive now in place simply screw the retaining bracket down into place and screw the bottom plate back onto the system using the 10 screws we removed earlier. We are now ready to either reinstall the operating system or clone your operating system across to your new SSD. Okay, so the Samsung 830 256GB SSD has now been installed and the system overall is obviously very responsive. Boot up time was in around the 13 to 14 second mark. Applications are very responsive as you, as you would expect from an SSD. However, the real test is going to be this disk speed test. Again, we're using the same Blackmagic disk speed test software. The system itself has exactly the same setup, the same software installed, the same settings and so on. Uh, I managed to do a clean reinstall of Mountain Lion using a USB drive. I've already created another video, I'll link to it below in regards to creating a Mountain Lion bootable USB flash drive. And I used that to boot off of installed Mountain Lion and then used a time machine backup to restore my system to exactly how it was. So we have the system, the SSD installed within the system using exactly the same settings and so on as the hard drive we tested earlier. As you may remember, the hard drive we tested earlier came in at around 100 megabytes per second read and write. So if we start this test here, and wow, we can see straight away the write speed is right up there, 385 and look at the read speed there, it's 480. So uh, we're looking at almost a four times, over four times improvement over the stock hard drive, which was 100 megabytes per second. And we're looking at around the 400 or 390 meg write and almost getting up to the 500 meg speeds uh, in regards to the read. So there we go, I'll stop the test just there. There we go. That's how much faster an SSD is in comparison to a standard hard drive. Highly recommend the Samsung 830. I've had no problems with it at all. Um, no sleep-wake issues or anything similar. And it's very easy to obviously install within the MacBook. It's going to be just as easy to install within a PC. And very fast. Makes a huge difference to the overall operating, operating system. The system also runs much cooler because of no moving parts creating extra heat and also much quieter again because of no moving parts on top of that you're looking at a battery life saving also because ssds draw much less power than hard drives so there we go i hope you found this video useful that was the samsung 830 ssd installation into a 2012 macbook pro